to NASA, and I was trying to figure out, well, why wouldn't they take care of, like, you know, stuff that is important in the game? You know, what's, what's bigger than what hardcore care, players care about? And that is the social infrastructure in which, we, in which we communicate about the game and how happy we are, you know, in expressing ourselves through the game, through Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and so on and so forth. So, that's the gain from it. Now, the pros to it. Here are the pros to it. The pros are, is that uh, under this umbrella, the people that are already socially organized will be even become bigger. And any events that are hold on their improv can easily be stolen by, let's say, White Boy or Josh. So let's say, for instance, they posted a video on their channel and they wanted to win whatever the prize was that everybody else is paying the fee to. So this is the great thing about it. If you have X amount of subscribers on YouTube and you are an elite member and you post a video and it's about winning Xboxes or prizes or trips or whatever, and you post a, a video, it could be a mediocre video, a mediocre clip, a mediocre improv, or whatever it is. You can literally control everything in, in the improv section just based on your subscriber base. So you could, you, you, you could basically take over that whole section. Um, the great thing about it for new people is that you can organize, uh, whereas on in, in YouTube you cannot... Um, under a, you know you can spawn new people from this, but uh, the the those are the positive things. I mean, you, there's more community in it. But once again, this stuff is all free already. YouTube is free. Um, Huppet Gaming is free. All I mean, your stats are already free. You're monetizing everything, and I really am confused as to you know PlayStation is not a socially integrated gaming platform and people don't pay to play on the PS3 so if you're on the elite and you see your stats and now you can't see your stats and you can't post videos and you want to do those things if they're not paying on the PS3 now then the main focus is the burden of the Xbox Live players who are already paying a subscription, who are more apt to pay another monthly subscription, which PS3 players are not. So what does that tell me about the Call of Duty franchise on the PS3? That they really don't care if they even see another day on the PS3. You know, I mean, they're going to sell their units. Uh, but, you know, in the whole, on the whole scheme of things, I think the... the, the uh, the cons far supersede the pros in this situation. You know, I think it's good in the, you know, as far as like putting everything together under one umbrella, but to be to monetize off of it and 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 making a business model for other gaming companies to set up is not what the majority of real players want. The real players want, you know, statistical data, dedicated servers, you know, maybe personalized home pages within the elite section, gun packs, you know, active patching. I mean, if I'm paying for an, uh, an extra service, the things that I want done that, that concern me are in-game mechanics, not something that is part of a social media. I mean, they are appealing to the, to, the, to the masses who just, you know, are casually enjoying themselves and expressing themselves even further. You know, and I don't know how, what particular group they are targeting either, because if you have to pay a monthly fee and you're just a casual player, who, who is that generally including? I mean, are we talking about people that are like, you know, 22 to 30 who have a regular job and, and that's your target base that can afford to pay that. I mean, um, uh, and just talk about the game. I just don't, I'm not seeing it. So, I mean, I don't want to be too negative on it, but 
I'm just stating, you know, future aspects of what could develop from this. I mean, literally, there could be a, a complete shutdown on gaming videos and everything is controlled by de developers and you really are not going to have the freedom that you have seen in the past years on YouTube. The expression of gaming will be diminished to the point where, um, you know, only a select portion of the people who buy the game will be, you know, in, on the, you know, basically being viewed on a pedestal. They're the people who spend the money. So if that's what you want from your game, go ahead and get Elite. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's already there now. I don't think it, it is what the majority of us really want. Weapon packs, m you know, uh, map packs, uh, dedicated servers, number one on the list. You know, I'd rather have weapon packs than map packs. I'd rather have an in-game store. I'd rather have, if I'm spending $9 a month, I want to have something that somebody else doesn't have that's in the game that's a casual gamer. Like, I want them to want my service because I got something that they don't have in the game. That's what I want. I want to be able to have a virtual item that if I'm paying a monthly fee, that maybe I could say, sell that virtual item on eBay to a casual gamer that just maybe wants that one piece. Now, I think the direction of this is we already have this stuff. It's free right now. So, I mean, I mean, you guys can go look at it. I don't uh, mean to, do, like, to ramble on about it. And I hope you could see what I'm talking about. Anyway, it's your boy Fist. Um, hopefully we'll see you more on the uh, E3 release party as to maybe some more information. You know, a couple of things that I'm not clear on, and are we getting dedicated servers? They really didn't say. Are we getting clan servers that are dedicated? They really didn't say. Is that part of the 995? They really haven't said. But as far as like bundling everything up, funneling it down, and changing the future for developers and gaming being free on YouTube, I don't see it happening. Because if you're already asking them to pay now, and it's just a matter of time before they realize it, listen. If you're not an elite member, you're not you're not going to be allowed to post a video, because that's the way we're going to maximize our our stock potential on this particular uh, extra edition, which we explained to the Wall Street Journal. It only makes deductive sense. It's only logical. I mean, I mean, I don't see any other way out around it. So I mean, we are seeing the beginning of them phasing out free hosting of online gaming just like music music is no longer free if, if you're an artist and you want to post a video and you got you feeling good about it you can't do it uh, movies I mean radio used to be free basically no free you know water was free now you gotta buy it TV was free now you gotta buy it everything they figure out how to charge you for it you know the only pros that I can see to it is that if you're a complete noob and you don't know how to go and look for all this stuff and put it together yourself. You know, I mean, if, you, if I guess it's like this. If you don't want to cut your own grass, you can pay somebody to do it. And to me, as a gamer, it's a new move. And it's a new move and it's a backdoor to the whole expression of YouTube and expressing yourself with gaming. Anyways, it's your boy Fizz.